you know what? I really want to eat that ice cream sundae, okay? The ice cream sundae has 800 calories in it. If I can just burn 800 calories on the treadmill, then I then it's like I didn't even eat it, and I can erase it. it doesn't work that way. You eat that ice cream sundae, you, you have to burn 60,000 calories to get rid of that, that sundae, and you can't do that. created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. RxTelevisionRxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, your weekly question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. Bodybuilding, non-bodybuilding, diet, training, supplementation, IFBB pros. This is the place to be. We have a lot of questions um, from the Dave Palumbo Experience app, from our Facebook page, uh, and from our Instagram platform as well. So we're going to dive right into the questions. The first two questions on this show, of course, from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. For a second week in a row, you are referred to as Big Dave. So I don't know if that's a thing <laughs> amongst your app community, but so be it. Uh, while following your pre-contest protocol and a low-carb diet, if you compete and have another competition eight weeks later, should you continue with the PED protocol from the eight-week mark again or – would you suggest dropping some of the compounds like try and master on Winstrol for a couple of weeks and start again closer to the competition? Can you stay on trend for 16 weeks? Yeah, it's, it's a good question, you know, because uh, usually if you have a show like two or three weeks after the first one, I would just say stay on everything. But if it's eight weeks, I what I usually do is sometimes I give guys a break. I'll, I'll just bring them down to like 500 milligrams per week of testosterone, no other drugs for two weeks, and then build them up again for six weeks. I probably would put them right back on the on the, the typical last six week protocol, but I think giving them that little two week break to kind of just clean out of that stuff and just kind of get their head cleared, get rid of all the water they may be holding from the rebound off the show, and you know get assuming they were in the best shape of their life, and then kind of like let them eat a little bit more and then kind of repeat them up that last six weeks. Um, it's it's very hard. I don't know if any of you guys have tried it yourself, but it's very hard to do shows eight weeks apart because it feels like it, it's a year apart. Because when you're that lean to hold on for that long, it's very, very difficult. That's why you can't just go and say, all right, I'm just going to keep dieting like I was before for, for eight more weeks. You won't make it. You have to de-peak a little bit, eat a little bit more, cut back your cardio, take away some of those drugs, let your body kind of like go down a little bit and then bring it back up again. And, and that's, that's usually the right, uh, the right protocol. Second question, again, these questions from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Do you think your blood type plays a role in how you digest certain types of food? I've read that only B blood type can optimally digest whey protein as an example. Any truth to this? I'm actually B protein. Uh, B protein. I'm actually B, B blood type, believe it or not. And um, no, I, I don't believe the whole blood type diet. I just don't think it's – there's really no science behind it. It's, it's, it's a pseudoscience and um, – the best, you know, that was the best they could do years ago, right? Because you could tell your blood type very, very relatively easy, and they could try to make trends based on that. But nowadays, we have DNA testing. We can tell you. We know exactly what you could digest and not digest. Once once again, I sell a kit called DNA Power on DavePalumbo.com. You can you get it. You swab your cheek. You send it in, and then they send, they'll, they'll contact you and send you all your results. But it tells you what you can do. Tells you if you're a good protein digester. It tells you if you're good at handling carbs. If you're good at handling fats. If you can ha digest lactose, 
it tells you it tells you if you convert a lot to DHT or you convert a lot of testosterone to estrogen. You can find all these great things out about how you react to certain foods and vitamins and, and can you can you methylate B12, can you methylate folate? All these important things you can tell on these DNA tests. So there's no more guessing, well, I'm gonna do the B, the B or the A uh, blood type diet. There's no science behind that. There is science behind DNA testing, and that's really what people should be looking for towards the future. And these two questions were from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. It's an app I offer on the Android or iTunes store. It's $29 a month. You get me as your coach in your back pocket. You get access to all my writings, all my videos, all in one place. I answer everyone's questions in an open forum on the things. So you see everyone's questions, everyone's answers. I also do a Q&A video exclusively for the app members every single week. Plus, we put up a workout every single week. It's, it's a great resource. And uh, for, like I said, for $29 a month, you basically got me in your back pocket. So check it out. I, I appreciate all the support. We have a lot of members on the app. And uh, the more people that come on, the better the questions are, too. So it, it's a big learning experience. Let's go to our Facebook uh, questions. Again, if you're not following us there, just go to the search bar, type in RX Muscle. Uh, Kayvon Sutter Nia has been asking a bunch of good questions over the last few weeks. Uh, do you think that all anabolic groups of steroids accrue protein at a similar rate or marginally different? You know, it's, it's, it's a tough question to answer because it's like that means that it would imply that we have a quantification for how much, you know, each steroid builds muscle. We really don't. I mean, everyone responds differently. Uh, you know, do certain steroids make you grow bigger and stronger faster? Yeah. You know, I mean, the ones that are the stronger ones, like testosterone, for instance, is probably the, the, the most potent of all of them. Trembolone, we you know, puts a lot of muscle on too. Do the strongest steroids have the most side effects? Usually they do, yeah. Now, obviously, if you're using long-acting injectables, they're a lot safer than saying using short-acting orals like anadrol and dianabol, but you know, the stronger steroids build muscle faster and they're going to take that food you're eating and they're going to be able to put it, put it together and, 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 and create more muscle mass. Theoretically, obviously, assuming you're training properly, because remember the body will only repair what you damage. So if you can really, and this was the whole, the whole insight behind Dorian H training was increase the intensity, reduce the volume. Don't worry about how many sets you do because if you're using the same muscle fibers over and over and over again, more than likely you're going to have probably overtrain them. Uh, but if you can dig deeper and make your body exert more force, lift heavier weights with higher intensity, you're going to access more muscle fibers. So let's say your bicep, for instance, has a million, a billion muscle fibers or a million muscle fibers, just for instance, but you can only access 500,000 of them by doing a, cer a certain bicep curl. Okay, and you, you figure, well, if I do this bicep curl 25 times, 25 sets, I'm going to be able to, you know, damage more muscle. But you're not because you're only accessing half of the fibers because you're not lifting hard enough or intense enough. You can increase that intensity another 25% where you're accessing 75% of the muscle fibers and you're only doing four sets, for instance, or even three sets, you know, you're going to get build more muscle because now the body is telling you know, the cells or the cells are telling the body, we got, we need more muscle because you know what, this guy's asking us to do 25% more than we normally do. We have to have bigger muscles and stronger muscles for that. So the training is, is the stimulus. The steroids just help with the repair process. So you can take all the steroids you want. If you don't train intense enough, you're not going to build any muscle. So really you could build muscle with Anabar, you know, if you wanted to, but if you train intensely enough and then you take a stronger anabolic like testosterone and trembolone, testosterone, equipoise, you're going to grow at maximum rate. Let's go to uh, Krasimir Gurganov. Greetings from, Bul from Bulgaria. Uh, do you stop creatine before a show? Is it zero carbs a day the best uh, for cutting for a show? Which strategy will give better results? Same calories and more cardio, two hours or less calories and same cardio, one hour. You know, unfortunately, I, I wish it was as easy as if you if you do more cardio, you can eat more food, but it, it doesn't work that way. So, like, it, it, too bad you can't figure out. You know what? I really want to eat that ice cream sundae. Okay, the ice cream sundae has eight hundred calories in it. If I can just burn eight hundred calories on the treadmill, then I then it's like I didn't even eat it, and I can erase it. it doesn't work that way. You eat that ice cream sundae, you you have to burn sixty thousand calories to get rid of that that sundae, and you can't do that. So it's it, there's not a it's not like a you can eat more food if you do more cardio thing, or if you you can you can lose weight faster by you know reducing calories. 
it, it, it's macros. Your body needs a certain amount of macros, and that's really what you have to determine. The, the, the first part of the question, I, I, I think I ignored Yeah, it. do you stop creatine? creatine. Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. creatine is something I usually stop at two weeks out. Yeah. I don't even really use it with my with my people pre contest They only use really use it off season, um, but you definitely have to stop it a couple like a week or two before because it definitely causes a little bit of fluid retention and you cannot take creatine when you're not drinking. So when you're dehydrating you know, the last couple of days, you, you you can damage your kidneys if you're taking creatine. So you don't want to do that for that reason too. Let's go to a uh, Marty uh, Muniami. Every time I have whey protein, I get heartburn. Try multiple brands, some with little to no fillers. But when I have a beef collagen protein or a vegan protein, I'm fine. I'm not lactose intolerant. I can have milk, etc. I can have everything else, just not whey protein. What could cause that? You know, usually when people report this, it's usually because they're using a certain brand of protein. And sometimes, like, you know, certain um, flavoring systems can, can cause indigestion. Uh, like, uh, I, I don't know, just certain things make people get into, you know, cinnamon, for instance, sometimes irritates people's, you know, gut a little bit. And you wouldn't think that that's what it is, but it's the cinnamon. It's not necessarily the whey protein. If, if you get indigestion is not really caused by a lactose issue. Usually indigestion is, is, is by the flavoring system. Just like if you're eating food, some people get indigestion when they eat chicken, when they put certain seasonings on it. And they don't even realize it, especially hot sauce. I know guys who put a lot of hot sauce, which you shouldn't do anyway, but uh, you don't realize it. But off-season, it doesn't bother you. But pre-contest, it does because you're not eating as much food that's going to absorb all that hot sauce. So you're ex putting excessive amounts, and it might cause indigestion. What I recommend you do is get some apple cider vinegar, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, the, the one with mother that has the pulp in it. And you take a tablespoon of that. I mix a tablespoon twice a day with my two fiber lye shakes I take. And you know what? I never have indig indigestion. If I do get it, I mix it with six ounces of water, a tablespoon of apple cider, and drink it, and it's gone. So uh, you can. There are a lot of natural remedies that can help you get rid of that as well. And um, uh, like I said, so a lot of times those vegan proteins do have some carbs in it, and they don't really use artificial sweeteners in those. So that's probably what it is. It could be the artificial sweetener too that's causing it, but it's usually that artificial flavoring system that will make some people get the indigestion. Uh, Sarah Bogish asked a question that I know you're very particular or rather, very, rather, rather, very fond of answering. And that is your leg workout. I mean, if you were to go down as far as sets, reps, the different, um, you know, things that you did for your, for your hamstrings, I, I know you're big right. on squats, but if you could explain yeah. your leg day workout. Yeah, I would, uh, usually either come into the gym and I would do either leg extensions first or. And I would switch off. Sometimes I would start like with pre-exhausting, doing some leg extensions, warm my legs up with that. But I would do my sets. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do like just a couple of warm-ups and then go back to it later. I would do my leg extension either first or I would do it after pressing and, and squatting movements. Let's assume it's, it's the day I'm not doing it. So I would come in. I would usually stretch a little bit. I'd go to squats. I would do, you know, usually it was up to six sets at, at one point because, you know, I was lifting so heavy. You can't just jump from, you know, 135 warm up to 405. You have to go 220, you know, you go 225, you go 315, you go 405. And then I would usually do five, whatever, uh, 485. And then I would do, um, I would do the 600 pounds. But for most people, they're not going that heavy. So four or five sets of squats is usually pretty good. Then I would either do leg press or I would do hack squat. I would never do both because I think that's too much already. And I would usually do two or three sets of those. Um, and then I would go from there, I would do my leg extensions and from leg extensions and I would go to hamstrings and I would usually do two different exercises. I would do usually laying, lying leg curls. And I would, then I would do like one legged leg curls at a time. Usually if they, if the, if the gym had a machine where you can stand and do the one legged leg curls, I would do that. So I'd probably get about six, five to six sets of hamstrings done. And then that was it when I was lifting super heavy nowadays, because I don't really do squat squats anymore because of my knee and my ankle. I'll do the inner outer adductor machine, you know, a little bit. I'll do two sets of inner of the adductors and two sets of abductors. But I didn't really do that when I was back, just worried about putting mass on. Maybe pre-contest, I would throw those in just for, you know, a little extra detail. But I didn't do them on a regular basis. And that was it. it it's so basic, legs. It, and it's brutally hard because the squats and the presses or the squats and the hacks are really what are going to destroy you. The rest, the other stuff is intense, but it's not, it's not quite as bad. And that's why I would try to sometimes get those over with first. You know, there were times where I reversed the order, where I would do hamstrings first, and then I would do leg extensions, and then I would do like 
squats last. And, and I never was able to squat as heavy, obviously, when I would do that. But sometimes it was good just for a change of pace. Let's go to Bilal Hamide. Uh, appreciate all the knowledge you share with the bodybuilding community. In my last show, morning time, my legs had a lot of separation, striation, days leading into the show. However, come show day, no matter what, my legs would not show any striations whatsoever. What could be the cause of quads in specific uh, losing their separation on show day? Usually it's because people get too flat. You know, they maybe they de over dehydrate too much. Uh, a lot of times they cut sodium when they really don't need to, and that flattens out the muscle. And then they, you know, after the show, they eat a piece, they eat, you know, five pieces of pizza. And the next morning they wake up and they got crazy striations through their quads. If the muscle's dehydrated, you know, you want to you want to take the water out from under the skin. So where the skin and muscle meet, you don't want water in between. They're obscuring the muscle. But if you take too much water out, okay, the muscle loses water and it gets flat. And so you, when you there's nothing happens when you flex the muscle. So even though you have no water under the skin, you have no you don't have enough water inside the muscle, and that's a problem too. So over using diuretics, depleting too much, cutting sodium too much. I don't even cut sodium anymore on my on my athletes because I just think it doesn't it doesn't really it's unnecessary. And stopping drinking too soon, too, can also do that. So try to maybe hydrate a little better. You know, don't overdo it. Usually, like, if you're really super crazy lean the night before, you might want to do, like, a greasy, salty meal, like a burger and fries, just to give you a little buffer so that when you – overnight, you, you know you're going to dehydrate. And so when you wake up in the morning, you're not as flat. You got to play with these things. And, you know, I, I, I struggle with athletes that I work with trying to get that perfection. And, and it's good – it's good to rehearse it. So in other words, if I know an athlete is three weeks out from a show, I might start doing some carb ups with them in the weeks leading up to the show just to see how their bodies respond. Some people dehydrate real easy. Some people it's harder. Once you know who you're working with and what their bodies are like, you can, you can pick the right protocol. Ivan Banning adds, what's the highest your macros ever went when you were at your biggest? Well, the highest they went was – was they were so high I couldn't even calculate them anymore. <laughs> so, to be, and, and I'm being completely honest. I was probably eating like 600 grams – 650 grams of protein. I was probably getting well over 1,000 grams of carbs. And, I, and who knows how much fat, probably like three, 400 grams of fat. I was eating a lot of food, you know. And like I said, while, you know, not all of it was clean, most of it was pretty clean food because you can't just eat junk food all day long because you're just not hungry enough. So a lot of it was clean stuff. A lot of it was shakes that was pouring down my throat. But after, as long as I knew I hit a certain amount, I didn't worry if I went over it. And that's why I tell people too. I said, if I give you a diet and, you're, and I'm working with someone off season, and he, he, here's the diet. If you can hit all those meals and macros that I'm giving you and you're still hungry after that, and you, you know, your your metabolism is flying. You can eat more. I don't care if you eat more, as long as you're not, you know, eating less. You know, and that's the problem. And, and I have a lot of guys who tell me, you know, Dave, I've heard you say that off season is harder than pre contest, and I didn't believe you until I started doing off season with you. And I realized it's it's a lot harder to eat when you're not hungry than it is to starve a little bit when you are hungry. And 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 so you learn that the hard way. Force feeding yourself is not easy. And that's why there's not a lot of guys that are that huge because they can't get all the meals down. And that's just the reality of, of bodybuilding. If you can't force yourself to eat and never miss meals, you're, you're not going to make the progress that you're looking for. Let's go to Chester Brown. Um, it was said that a dose of GHB would yield the equivalent of 2IU natural growth hormone. Is there any study which has quantified the most amount of GH release by taking GABA? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that that um, that that is accurate. We used to take two grams of GABA uh, before bed. I actually I still do because I, I have it in my Somalize product. If you take three Somalize before bed, uh, our species nutrition product, you get two grams of GABA, and that does cause some GH release at night, uh, and it does relax you. Uh, but to quantify how much GH and the equivalency of what it would be if you were actually injecting it, it's, it's impossible to figure that out. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't even venture. Probably taking GABA and releasing it, you know, causing GH release is probably more analogous to taking like Sermorellin or one of those growth hormone releasing peptides. That's probably more on par with that, you know, with the, with the comparison to that. And I still wouldn't even know how to compare them because it's impossible to really figure it out. It's not so easy to see how much GH your body releases because it pulses at it when you're sleeping. You know, so it, it's hard to really determine, you know, how much you're releasing. And uh, so if I gave you an answer, I'd be lying. Take one more question. Uh, lifts a lot. Any tips for a tighter waist? Your thoughts on vacuuming and waist trainers? Yeah, I have a, a, 
a video, maybe you so can find it. It's called the Dave Palumbo's Intestinal Breathing, you know, uh, video. It's got a lot of hits. And it basically, it work, tells you, you know, it's a yoga technique uh, called intestinal breathing where you actually pull your stomach in, you push it out, you pull it in, push it out. You do that 300 times every day. I do it while I'm driving. It takes about 15 minutes. You do 300 of those those every day. Number one, you're all that con- pulling in of your stomach and pushing it out is, is squeezing the, the uh, organs like the intestines, the liver, the pancreas, and it's allowing them to release toxins that they hold. And by doing that, you're going to get better energy flow in your body and you're, and you're going to have healthier organs. But the muscles that are actually pulling in your stomach are the transverse abdominus muscles, the same muscles that enable you to do a vacuum. So it kind of serves two you know, purposes. It's a good health movement to do uh, for general health and, and energy. And it's also good because if you're on a bodybuilding stage, if you do 300 of those a day while you're driving, you're not even paying attention. When you're on a stage and you want to vacuum your stomach, you're just going to do it. And you're not even going to think about it because your body, you've trained your body to do that. And I have a lot of young guys I'm working with now at the gym and I had them doing it and they're really noticing a big difference. And so uh, I highly encourage you to watch that video. And uh, it, it really, it, it changed my whole, you know, my whole philosophy and, and, and how I was able to do things. And it really fixed, I had a lot of dissension issues and it really fixed that because it, it, like I said, I think what happens is when you eat an enormous amount of food and you get really big is the organs get stiff. And instead of being able to pull your stomach in, because the organs are actually fighting against that, you you vacuuming, you you can't do it. You just have this like distension there. And so once you get those organs nice and soft again, and, and they can move, when you vacuum, you're, you're going to lose that uh, that gut. I see. I think you know. I see a lot of really good physiques on stage with a lot of good vacuums nowadays, and I don't see as much distension because I think people practice their vacuums. But this is a good way to practice your vacuums and improve your health at the same time. So check it out. So I had that video linked. Now, I don't know. Last time I did this, I think I pointed this way, but it was actually this way. (laughs) Somewhere above my head, you will find the link to that video. We just played a quick preview of it right now. (laughs) That is going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. Again, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss any of our show's upcoming segments. Whatever we have coming up, obviously, now we're heading into the thick of the IFBB contest schedule. So a lot, a lot of contests are relating to the upcoming contest. Um, If you like what you're watching, hit the like button, comment below. And as always, we appreciate all of your support. All new episode of After Hours, Heavy Muscle Radio, um, and then a new episode of the Testosterone Experts Roundtable with Dr. John Pierce, Domitasio, and Dave Palumbo. Right now, all on the channel. For Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.